Hey, thanks for tuning in. In this video, I'm going to talk about kosher slaughter and the written Torah. In Rabbinic Judaism, there are a number of specific practices for kosher slaughter. And as with many of the Rabbinic Jewish traditions, most of these are not in the written Torah. The main requirement with slaughtering animals in the written Torah is pouring the blood and not eating the blood. For example, we see this in Leviticus 17, 11 through 13 regarding blood and hunted animals. For the vitality of the flesh, it is in the blood. Any vitality from you shall not eat blood. And each man which shall hunt a hunted animal or a flying animal which shall be eaten, and he shall spill its blood, and he shall cover it in dirt. This is reiterated in Deuteronomy 12.24 regarding the blood of the flock and the herd slaughtered within our gates. You shall not eat it. You shall spill it on the ground like water. And we also have this requirement of not eating the flesh with the blood in it. Deuteronomy 12.23 says, But affix yourself to not eat the blood. For the blood it is the vitality, and you shall not eat the vitality with the flesh. And Leviticus 19.26 says similarly, You shall not eat with the blood or you shall not eat on the blood in addition to the blood. So we are not allowed to eat the blood or to eat that which has the blood in it, or to eat with the blood. But what about the exact slaughtering practices or exact requirements of how to process an animal? Beyond not eating the blood, not eating with the blood, not eating the fat or the tallow, and pouring the blood out, we do not have slaughtering commands in the sense of kosher slaughter. For example, the requirement or the prohibition of certain tools or methods is not present in the written Torah. There are some practical considerations to pouring out the blood and not eating the flesh with the blood. Bleeding out the animal is the most realistic way to spill it on the ground like water. If the heart is not beating, this is not going to be accomplished. Even if the animal has died recently, once the heart has stopped and you try to bleed it, very little blood comes out. We saw a previous command referencing hunting. Hunting is allowed in the written Torah, and people were probably not going to be hunting an animal using just a knife by itself. They might have used arrows or throwing spears or other implements, at least for the initial approach in the hunt. That requirement of spilling the blood is still present but it does not say it must be done using a particular tool or a particular way beyond that. The blood must simply be spilled out like water. In considering these requirements, we can infer in a practical sense that some type of arterial wound is necessary, some type of wound that's going to cause significant bleeding. That does not preclude other things like stunning the animal or shooting it or otherwise, assuming that the bleeding is still done. In addition, the text does not prescribe salting the meat or anything like that to draw the blood out. That's not a part of the written commands. And I want to add a few additional notes on this. 
most Western countries, their slaughtering practices do involve bleeding the animal. That red juice that we see come out of meat typically is not actually blood. It's an iron-containing solution. And we might also consider that when the text describes the slaughter of the animal, it says we are not eating the blood, but we are pouring it out. It does not say that we are cutting it out. In a sense, we could say that we have an implicit kosher slaughter practice in the written Torah, but it does not have the same details as the rabbinic traditions. We aren't required it to kill, we aren't required to kill it in one specific way, we're not required to use specific tools. Instead, it hinges upon the blood, not eating it, not eating the flesh with the blood, but pouring it out. Thanks for watching and remember the commands. Shalom.